Hello, everyone, and wow, well, <laughs> I am extremely tired. And not tired as in I'm gonna fall asleep, but I'm tired. I just finished a lot of traveling. Anyways, hello, everyone, and welcome to game number two in the series between Lucifer and Sonic. I am Crota shouting out this matchup for you as Lucifer spawns as the gray undead on the bottom right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, on the top left hand side of the map, we have the yellow night elf. Night Elf versus Undead in this 1v1, and we'll see what exactly Sonic is going to do to try and overcome what we saw in game number one. There was no flashy movements, there was none of, none of the things that normally jump out in, in to really describe what happened. It just seemed like Lucifer was always one step ahead in figuring out what to do. He got a number of great, great kill steals, timing those very, very well, and once he got that bonus, I, I would say almost level 2 off of his opponent, he was then able to just make sure that since his opponent was down a level, not let him gain any traction. Now we are going to be opening up with a very, very similar ghoul build as we see the Ultra of Darkness now training up that Death Knight. That Crypt is training up a ghoul as now ghouls are making their way out to do a bit of scouting. Now, this ghoul will be looking for where exactly this Ancient of War is positioned. You can see that the Ancient of War is actually positioned over here, closer to this gold mine location here. This is not typically the location that I believe Sonic likes to go. Normally, he likes to play the, place the Ancient of War here and clear out this 533 creep camp. Perhaps he thinks that he needs to take a little bit more of a risky maneuver in order to get ahead. All right, we can see that the ghoul is still right there. And you can see double wisp. There is an archer right there as well. Oh, killing that one particular sheep a little bit earlier than you would imagine. Just so that it can turn into a skeleton and the death knight who should be making an appearance right about now will be able to get there in time. All right, this is already looking very, very bad, but Sonic is committed to this particular strategy, and he is going to be going up against a Warden. All right, the Warden is a very, very dangerous, dangerous hero for those ghouls, as the ghouls do take a lot of damage. Now, Death Knight did not get Unholy Aura, a beautiful, beautiful um, decision right there, making sure not to get Unholy Aura, and now has Death Knight to counteract that Shadow Strike. The Shadow Strike, however, does cause a little bit of problems. Is the Warden going to be able to finish off at least one ghoul? And I believe that one ghoul has seen the end of its days. I don't know how an undead dies, but, well, that's exactly what happened there. Skeletal Minions joining back in on the fight. Ancient of War backing off. Let's take a look here. Warden does not have very much experience at all. Didn't get anything from this particular creep camp as he was very much pressured early on. Warden now looking to back off here. And this is one of those very, very scary moments as an... As a Night Elf player, you know that you cannot, or you know that you need a level advantage over an undead player. Undead players normally do not really begin creeping until tier 2, or when they have Crypt Fiends. The Lich then can, then can come out, as you can now see that the Death Knight is opting to do a little bit of an unorthodox strategy for undead creeping right now with a whole bunch of ghouls. And we are going to be looking at the tech to tier 2 here so far, as we are still training up more and more ghouls. All right, perhaps he is expecting or thinking that, you know what, if I just have a sheer large number of ghouls that can overwhelm my opponent, if I can get to level 2 before the warding can get to level 2 and get Phantom Knives, that should be enough. There's a level 1 warden, and that warden is just absolutely going to be, well, hating herself here in just a moment. Death Knight does have does have dust of appearance and it's going to be trying to get in front of that warden that unholy aura allowing that death knight to move around very very quickly as that death knight is still wandering around there all right there is a shadow strike onto the death knight meanwhile back down across over here damage is going to be absorbed very very easily here as you can see another death coil does go down oh warden oh wow what looked like she fell asleep at the wheel for just a moment that is not the case was able to slip through perhaps lucifer making a mistake there but the creeps are now just joining in on the fight as the death coil goes to the death knight all right death coil in time however the talisman of evasion does go over to that warden the warden is 
looking to take a little bit more damage there. You can see that poison damage coming across once more, and all the units in the back are just still trying to stay alive. Keeping pressure is important at this point. There is another death coil that Death Knight is just doing textbook harassment, and the skeletal minions and the ghouls um, are just having a very, very easy time with all of this. All right, let's take a look here. Are we going to see an engagement? Yes, Warden is in a little bit of trouble. Does she realize it? Warden now trying to run off to the north. Looks like she will be able to get off to the north and live to fight another day. But at what cost? Undead ahead in the hero war. Death Knight now almost level 3, well before the Lich is even going to get trained yet. All right, are we going to perhaps see a different hero? Yes, it is going to be a Naga Sea Witch second. So, oh, are we going to... Nope, the Naga Sea Witch did not get that kill there. He is now... She is now backing off. Excuse me, Lady Darkscale now backing off. The Naga Sea Witch being brought over is a much more aggressive, aggressive unit. Knowing that any sort of fleeing unit is going to have a very difficult time. Forest Troll Berserker almost down, and it looks like it will go down indeed. Ancient of War back across over here. Is it going to end up surviving? I do not believe so. Troll Shadow Priest now coming up back across. And what is this? Why would the Troll Shadow Priest even try and do that? That is just absolutely um, the wrong play there. As you can now see that the Warden is once again taking a lot of damage. All right. Naga Sea Witch does have Claws of Attack plus six. Death Knight now making its way over. Are we going to see Dust of Appearance? Yes, we are. There is now level three on the Death Knight. Naga Sea Witch for, porn, um, for Sonic, but Sonic is not going to be able to recover from this at all. You can see that the ghouls are already getting in the way. Add in cold arrows, add in unholy aura, and that all equates to a squirrel of Town Portal being transferred over. And, well, a, now a dead warden. All right, so all that time I thought the Naga Sea Witch was going to fall. No, the warden falls, and there is the GG very, very strong hero usage by Lucifer in that matchup as he takes this series two to nothing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game number two in this series and hope to see you guys on Battle.net.